my knees again God I'm begging please again I need you Oh I need you Walking down these desert roads Water for my thirsty soul I need you Oh I need you Your forgiveness It's like sweet sweet honey on my like the sound of a symphony to my ears It's like holy water on my skin Dead men walk into slave to sin They want to know about being born again I need Oh God, I need you. So take me to the riverside. Take me under baptize. I need you. Oh God, I need you. Your forgiveness is like sweet. your grace. God, I need it every day. It's the only thing that ever really makes me want to change. Yeah. I don't want to abuse your grace. God, I need it every day. It's the only thing that ever really makes me want to change. Oh, I don't want to abuse your grace. God, I need it every day. The only thing that ever really makes me want to change. I don't want to abuse your grace. God, I need it every day. It's the only thing that ever really makes me want to change. Your forgiveness is like sweet, sweet honey on my like the sound of a symphony to my ears. It's like holy water, your forgiveness. Oh, it's like sweet, sweet honey on my lips. It's like the sound of a symphony to my ears. It's like holy should have gotten one of these worship folders looks like this you'll need the bottom section of that uh, if you fill that in if you're new to us this morning if you would fill that in we'd love to get to know you better you can just peel it off right here at the bottom and then drop that in the offering boxes behind and you will also have another use for that uh, a little later on the service that pastor brian will uh, let you know about so with that there's also the new life groups just started like last week so you still plenty of time to get in if you're not connected or hooked up with one of the life groups uh get that see somebody at the at the entry here and uh, they'll get you set up with that let's continue in worship Amen. <laughs>
song last week. Pretty simple. It's an old song, but a little, uh, a little bit redone. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. And we pray that our unity may one day be restored. They'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. We will walk with each other. We will walk hand in hand. We will walk with each other. We will walk hand in hand. And together we'll spread the news. Christians by our love, by our love, yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. They'll know us by our love, our love, our love, our love. They'll know us by our love, our love. 
together we will work side by side and we'll guard each other's dignity and save each other's Christians by our love, by our love, yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. They'll know us by our love, our love, our love, our love. They'll know us by our love, our love. definitely know that we are Christians by our love. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. You can be seated. have a time of prayer so you're welcome to come up to the stairs or stay at your spot there whatever is most comfortable to you I'm going to start by reading John 13 35 actually 34 and 35 a new command I give you love one another as I have loved you so you must love one another by this all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another father god we just want to give you praise this morning that you are love that you're a god of love that you demonstrated your love through your son jesus lord we just give you praise for the way in which you move and work Lord, we thank you that you are never changing and that all we need is found in you. And Father, when we think of your love and that just how amazing it is, we can't help but recognize that we have fallen short this week in the way that we've loved others. So Lord, I just pray that we would take time to confess before you, privately thinking of things that may be ways in which we have fallen short and we thank you that your forgiveness is there that you meet us where we're at Father I thank you that just as the song we sang your forgiveness is like holy water on my skin you wash us clean we are new before you and Lord, we also want to ask on behalf of others, Father, we pray for those who need healing, physical, emotional, mental, spiritual. Lord, we just pray that you would touch them in the way only you can. Father, comfort, bring wisdom, bring insight, bring peace. And Lord, we want to celebrate and also lift up our many missionaries around the world. We thank you for the churches in Kenya that we'll hear more about later and the movement that is going on with the Samburu people. We thank you for Michelle and Nicole, for Razvan and Alyssa, for Shelley, for Rick and Christina, for George and Sherry. Pray, Lord, that you would be near to them that you would give them exactly what they need in each situation that they find themselves and that your word would continue to go forth and that you would be glorified. Lord, we also lift up any other needs that we have personally or that we know of, of others around us, that you would meet those needs as well, Lord, wherever we're at. And Father, we want to lift up 
the Westview community staff, that you would continue to guide and direct, give wisdom to them as they lead, and especially Pastor Brian as he comes now to speak your word, that we would be open and teachable, that we would hear and respond, and that you would get the glory. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Good morning to those who are all online. It's still morning, right? Yeah, so we're glad you're here. How are you doing today? <laughs> this is a question to ask on a football weekend, right? How are you doing today? Did you kind of drag in? See, I just made my point. If you come in a little heavy today, it's okay, because I think by the time we're done today, we're going to flip your script, because you can't miss what God's doing uh, through and around us. So buckle yourselves in, and if you're in a little bit of a funk, let's shake that funk. That sounds like a song, doesn't it? Let's shake that funk. Let's shake. All right, just see if you're with me. Those online, we're glad you're here too. Hey, to our guests, uh, people the first time at Westview, my name is Brian, I'm our lead pastor. This worship guide here has the sermon notes on the back. It's kind of an outline of what we're talking about today. And so feel free to keep notes there. And uh, a couple of announcements on here. For those of you who are online, this is, this is on our Facebook Live link and it's also on our website. Uh, the important thing is I actually wanna make sure you all have one of these in your hands. So either one per family or one per couple of it's okay, or everybody, because we're going to actually all of us use this by the time we're done today. So if you need one, would you please raise your hand? I got some people here right in the back and upstairs. You need one of these today. Would you give me a raise of hand if you need a Connect card? Again, those who are online, this is Connect. This is on your Facebook Live or on our website, um, because we're going to want you to respond in this today. So make sure we all have a copy. Okay. Thank you, Rita and group. Uh, a couple announcements on here I do want to cover before I jump into scripture with you and talk today through the book uh, of Ephesians is one is that new life groups did kick off last week and the second round was this morning and through the week. If you're like, oh man, we missed it, you didn't miss it. Like we're just getting everybody signed up. We're just distributing books. There's over 31 life groups going on during the week. We want you in one. We want you growing in community with us so you haven't missed out and you're not too late. So make sure you get signed up there. Uh, another thing is I want to bring to mind here on the back, the REACH campaign. This is where we're going after to knock out our debt. Uh, we updated this facility to meet our mission and be able to do it better. And uh, I just want to say in the three months since we kicked off the matching, up, uh, the matching campaign update there, we've uh, had 55% of our goal before the first match comes in. And so I just want to say... Thank you. That's super generous, and it's really cool to see. This has always been a generous church, but can you continue to be this way? Uh, give back as best you can, and we're going to knock this building thing out um, because it's an amazing tool that we have. Amen? Amen. All right, so let's see. Did I miss anything? Okay, good. We're good to go. Well, let's jump into today's sermon. We are in this series as we go through the letter to the Ephesians, uh, the church in Ephesus or around that area. Last week was week one. This series title is really simple. It's just one. It's how are we one. The whole theme, the major theme of the book of Ephesians is unity and peace in the church. And so we're tackling this because we are in a time where there's a lot of divisiveness. So how do we as a church understand that? How do we respond to that? Most importantly, how do we hang together and how do we look different? Week one, we were in chapter one. So each week we're taking a whole chapter. So we'll be in this for six weeks. Week one, we started with the foundation of this whole book. The Apostle Paul writes this and he starts with, we are united in Christ. Our foundation is that we're all united in one thing. And we're all different, but we're united in Christ. And when we're united in Christ last week, we mentioned that we're overwhelmed with the blessings of heaven. Well, what does that mean? When we're all together in Christ, what are, those, what are those blessings from the heavenly realm? We said, well, when we're united in Christ, God loves and chooses us in Christ. God adopts us into his family 
through Christ. God pours out on his grace on those who belong to Christ and God purchases our freedom in the blood of Christ. And we're all like going, wow! <laughs> it's like I'm overwhelmed. We should be overwhelmed every week when we step back and look at the big picture of the blessing we have now when we're united in Christ. And so now we're ready to go on to book, or chapter two. So turn with me to Ephesians chapter two and we're gonna go through this whole chapter, at least key parts of it today to get the feeling for it. And while you're turning there, let me, I like going back and talking about, well, what was Ephesus like 2,000 years ago when Paul wrote this in about 60 AD? So the one thing I talked about is Ephesus was the third largest city in the Roman Empire. And so they started the church there. Where else do you want to be but in the place of influence? And we talked about, you've heard me talk many times about the Roman roads. The Roman roads were everywhere. Here's a map, and for those of you online, you can see it. All those roads are the Roman roads. And so Rome ruled the majority of the population, which in then existed around the Mediterranean basin, North Africa, through Israel, all the way around to uh, Asia, Asia Minor, Rome, the arrow, the red arrow is pointing to where Ephesus is, but all those roads are the major Roman roads. Rome ruled, and so they linked everything. And so these roads, the major roads, would have a Latin name like uh, Via Appia, that's one that came into Rome. Via Ignatia, Via Maris, that's one that went through Israel, the way of the sea. And so all these roads had Via. Via means the way. Via means the way. And so everybody would say back in these days that all roads lead to Rome. The way was all about Rome. And so I just wanted you to get a picture. When we talk about the Roman roads, what's really cool is why did God send Jesus during his time? Because everything was linked and there was one language that everybody knew, which was Greek. And it was the best time to release the good news about Jesus Christ because it traveled freely and it was well connected. Interesting today that today we have not Roman roads, we have globalization that links all of us like that. And I can talk to people across the globe and so it's really interesting to see how God's moving now which we'll talk about more later. So that's Roman roads, let's go to Ephesus and let's zoom in. This is an artist's description of the major buildings, how beautiful Ephesus was in Paul's time. The big half circle thing up there is the, is the amphitheater, which seated like 25,000. It was cut into a hill, and if you, if you go down the road to the left, that was the harbor road, and you can see a little bit of water up there in the upper left-hand corner. That was a, a river that they brought and made a port. They built a port right up to the city. So you would come in and get off a ship in a major travel route and you'd walk down the, by those colonnades and go right to the amphitheater. But if you come down this road to the north-south, that's called the Marble Road. You wonder why? It was pretty affluent. And then this road that comes across the bottom here in all these buildings was called the Carades Road. So all these were major roads. When you come through Ephesus, those three streets were really big streets that would connect you into, into Ephesus during that time. Let's take a look today what this looks like. This is the Harbor Road. When you get off the ship, look at how big that amphitheater is. That's the first thing you see when you're coming in. Like, like that's what it looks like today, how massive and how beautiful you would imagine it was. And here's another one which takes us down Crates Road there with all the uh, that was a huge library there towards the back that was very famous. It had the, one of the largest collections of writings anywhere within the Roman Empire. And so this is just that road that went down. You can almost imagine how opulent and how beautiful Ephesus was as everybody came here. And the reason I bring all that up is because when Paul's writing this, hundreds of thousands would have walked these roads during Paul's time. And everybody on these roads and on these streets coming through this central city of Ephesus would have had one thing in common. They were all dead. And that takes us to our first verse in chapter two. Paul's writing this. He says, once you were dead because of your disobedience and your many sins. You used to live in sin just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commander of the powers in the unseen world. He is a spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. All of us, Paul says, used to live that way. 
following the passionate desires and the inclinations of our sinful nature. By our very nature, we were subject to God's anger just like everyone else. So Paul, right into the early church in Ephesus, says we were all dead. All humanity was dead. Every one of us was dead. And we're all dead because of sin. And that sin separates us from God who is perfect and holy and it separates us from eternity with him. When we die, we're dead, but we're really dead now. And Paul said there's no exemptions. And so when you look at Paul, when he explains what does being dead mean, he breaks it down. I, I use the term living dead because in the zombie world, <laughs> I admit I like zombie movies, but in the zombie world, the living dead, this is what they were, the living dead. And so he says three things that make us living dead as we look through verses one, two, and three. He says, one, you live like the rest of the world. You live and look like the world and you're dominated by this evil age. He said the second thing is you listen to the wrong voice. He said you're listening to the voice of the world, the commander of the powers, the enemy with all his, his minions who are influencing you every day to say, did God really say, let's go do things our way? He says so you listen to the wrong voice. And the last thing he says, and because of that, you don't obey God. And the last thing is with, when you live like the rest of the world and you listen to the wrong voice, you yield to your nature. You live by earthly pleasure, and so Paul says, we're dead because we're dominated by the world and the enemy and our flesh. He said, but God won't leave us there. His anger is our wake-up call. And so here's our first sermon note together. Here's our first sermon note. Most everybody in this day walked down all these roads. We drive. So we're all driving down a dead-end road. So let's just bring this 2,000 years forward. We're all dead. We all live this way, just like Paul said. One time or other, all of us lived in dead. We were the living dead. Everyone in this room has been on a dead-end road. Everybody outside this church has either been on or is on a dead-end road. We are dead in our sin. We are the living dead. Let's look at sermon note number two. I love saying this. What's my favorite word in the Bible? But... <laughs> But God created an off-ramp. We talk about these roads and Roman roads and ways, but everybody believed that all the roads lead to Rome and that was a way, but there's an original road that God designed for his creation for us, a righteous way, we would say a right way of living. And while everybody is on the road to destruction because of sin, God builds an off-ramp to get us back on the original road. And we see this starting in verse four. This is so powerful and so important what, what, what Paul writes that I'd like us to read this together. And I'd like those who are online to shout it out in your own living rooms. But let's read this together. Start with my favorite word. But, but God is so rich in mercy and he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. It is only by God's grace that you have been saved. That was so important to read together. The off-ramp that God created is Jesus. The resurrection of Jesus changed everything for humanity. Everyone without Christ is dead. They're living dead. They're dead in their sin. And like a dead corpse, if you've ever walked up and poked one, they don't respond. And nor do we have the ability to respond on our own. But the two words, but God raised Christ from the dead. And he's so rich in mercy and love and grace that we can be saved from our death because on the cross, Jesus paid the penalty for our sin. And because Jesus rose from the grave, you and I can too. So this is a really cool part. Let's, let's use these words. Your third sermon note. God made us alive in Jesus' death. God made us alive in Jesus' death. 
The sermon title today, last week we said we're united in Christ. That was the foundation. Now we're going to talk about we are united in death. So what does that mean? It means we're one. We're together. We're united and alive. United with Jesus and united with each other as the church through Jesus' death. And through what Jesus did and paid a penalty that you and I could not pay. And God is so rich in mercy and love and grace, he didn't stop at just saving us. Let's go on to verse six. For God raised us from the dead along with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms because we're united with Christ Jesus. So God can point to us in all the future ages as examples of the incredible wealth of his grace and kindness towards us as shown in all he has done for us who are united with Christ Jesus. Have you already noticed in two weeks how many times we use the word united? And all united in him. Not only did God make those who believe in Christ rise from the dead one day, he's given us a place of honor in a heavenly realm seated with Christ today. Now Paul is repeating God said, not only did I save you, I'm actually seating you with my son now in the heavenly realm. And we said, well, what's that? Well, let's go back to the same thing we talked about last week. Last week we talked about the blessing of the heavenly realm as God loves us now and chooses us in Christ. He adopts us into his family because of Christ. He pours out grace on those who belong to Christ and he purchases our freedom in the blood of Christ. That is the heavenly realm blessing we still have today. Paul's repeating it here. That's what it means to be seated. How do we even begin to think about being seated with our Savior at the right hand of God? I can't. But when I look at all that blessing, I understand it, that God loves us that much that he sees us differently today through Christ. We were taken for those who believe and those who take the off-ramp and get off this road of destruction. We are taken from the lowest place of death and placed in the highest place of heaven with Jesus now. Because we're made new now. And he did this, Paul says, to show others through all the ages his grace. He's raising us to the heavenly realms to glorify himself to show, watch what I can do in your life. And that's going to be a marker to everybody else. Our lives are a milestone that people see, a marker in their lives when they're wondering, why am I on a road that's leading to nothing but pain and suffering? And you know what we call this? Resurrection power. When God raised Jesus from the dead and that same power is in us today because it raises us from the dead and it gives us the power of the Holy Spirit as God works through us to others. We have resurrection power. It's not ours. It's through us. And you have the ability yielded to God to change other people's lives. All we have to do, let me back up the bus a little bit. All we have to do is make a decision to take the off-ramp and get off the road that we're on. We're all dead. We were all dead at least one time. Many of us, many of us in this room realized I'm on the wrong road, and I took the off-ramp, and I made a decision to follow Christ. And that was the day I gave my life to him. And for many of us, we shared in that decision with the world through our baptism. Baptism is such a big deal here because it's such a big change in your life. We hold it as a very high sacrament because it's God's work on you and me that changes us. And so I want to jump out of the book of Ephesians and go make the connection Paul writes to the church in Rome in Romans chapter 6 and tie these two together. Paul writes this, since we've died to sin, we've taken the off-ramp, then how can we continue to live in it? Or have you forgotten that when we were joined with Christ Jesus in baptism, we joined him in his death? 
For we died and were buried with Christ by baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we also may live new lives. Okay, this is beautiful. Baptism is symbolic. It's symbolic of our decision to be united with Christ and be united in his death. And not just as individuals. This is so important to the church that we're united with a body too. Our baptism reminds us we're dead to sin and we're alive in Christ. And some of us in this room have never made that decision to be baptized. We've never sealed that decision in our hearts through baptism. Well, let me share with you, if you're there, that baptism first is commanded by Jesus. He says, don't be ashamed of me. Baptism is taking the off-ramp and saying, I'm no longer interested in this road to destruction, and I want new life in him. And why baptism is so beautiful is I get, we, I don't want to say there's only one way, but the way we choose to do baptism here is in front of all you and in a tank of water. Because when I go into that water, I'm saying I'm taking the off-ramp and I'm leaving my old self behind and I'm dying to it and I'm sharing the death of Christ. And I go into the water and I bury my old life in the water. And I bury my life of sin and my refusal to obey God. My, and it really was, I just, I was following my own life. And I'm leaving that in the water. And when I rise up, I'm new. And I rise up new, a new being, born again, we would say. And now my life is defined entirely by him, not me. And that's why baptism is so beautiful. And we do it in front of all these people because there's a bunch out here saying, I know what that's like. And we clap and we go nuts because we know the heavens go nuts. But there's other people sitting here going, I have not made that decision and I know I'm on the road. I'm still on the road to destruction. And in that sacrament of baptism, symbolically we are sealed with the Holy Spirit and we are welcomed into the community. All that happens and it's beautiful. So I want to ask you today if you've not made that decision or there's even confusion about baptism, hey, I was baptized as an infant, whatever those things are, I want you to take your Connect card and I want you to write on there, would you talk to me about, whoops, about baptism? Can I meet and can we talk about it? We have a great way of walking through. If on your heart is, I'm not sure, you might be thinking, I don't know if I've done this right. I don't know if I've ever committed. That's okay, we'll help you with that. Why is this important? I shared with the first service, I was 33 years old when I woke up to this. And I fought it, rules and stuff, and, and one day I got in the water because I absolutely wanted to. I had never declared or experienced what baptism is. And I've never looked back, and I never had any idea I'd be up here on a stage in front of you. <laughs> but write on here, on this Connect card, tear it off and say, hey, give us some kind of email or phone number and just say, hey, can you walk with me? Those of you online, you can do the same thing. And drop it off in the box, or we're gonna be right up here at the end of the service. When everybody's leaving and stuff, come up and just say, hey, and we'll help you wrestle. That's what we do. But taking this step, this big step, getting off the road to the off-ramp and getting on the right road, how do I do that? How do I do that and follow Jesus? Well, let's go back to what Paul's saying. Let's go out of Romans and back to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. Paul writes, God saved you by his grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for this. It's a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done, so none of us can boast about it. But Paul's reminding us that we're dead. There's nothing we can do. God's grace, his overwhelming love is reaching out to us right now. It's reaching out to those of us who have never made that decision right now, and all we have to do is respond. For those of you who never responded, today I'm telling you there's a sign right on the road right now in front of you that says, turn here. Turn here. Take the off-ramp. Let's get you on the right road.
And this is gonna be the best part. How do I turn? So let's go to our fourth sermon note. I love this. We turn by taking our hands off the wheel. (laughs) This is what Paul's writing. We turn by taking our hands off the wheel. We're on the road of death and we got this opportunity to take the off-ramp to the road of life through Christ. And how do we do it? Well, we take our hands off the wheel. There's nothing we can do to save ourselves. And that's what Paul says. You can't take credit for this. It's my grace reaching you, and I'm the one that's going to make the change. And all we do is say, Jesus, I mean, I know this is cliche, and maybe it's 80s or 70s, I don't know, but Jesus, take the wheel. Let him take control of your life. But we love to hold on to the wheel. We love to say, I will turn onto the road. I will, uh-uh, take your hands off the wheel. Let him turn. All you have to do is accept that grace and let him, when he takes that wheel of our life, he's gonna give us that power of the Holy Spirit and all of a sudden we're gonna experience this new thing. We are born new. We take that off ramp, we are brand new. And there's something else that really happens here. It's important. When when we take our hands off the wheel, the real work of being new begins. And let's go back to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. This is what happens when we take our hands off the wheel. For we are God's masterpiece. You notice it didn't say, I got the wheel, I'll make my own masterpiece. (laughs) We take our hands off the wheel, and for we're God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus, so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. I think all of us can relate to this. Far too long in our lives, we've been trying to paint the canvas of our lives and create ourselves. How many here have done that or are doing it? Come on, I know all of us, we've been trying to paint our own canvas. And every time we try to paint our life and describe who we are, we're never left with something that satisfies. The picture isn't always right and it's never complete. But when we're given new life in Christ, and we take that off for him, we give the brushes and paint back to the master. Let him do the work, for he's the one that makes us like his son, like Christ. And that gives us our next sermon note. We are a masterpiece of the gospel. We're a masterpiece of the good news. We are... The good news is Jesus' life, death, and resurrection saves us if we believe it. And we're a masterpiece of that. And and R. Kent Hughes says there's two ways. There's two ways you can respond to this good news so God can make the masterpiece that you are to be. One is first believe it. Believe it. Believing it will lift us out of the darkness and into the heavenly realms. Believe that God can do this, that he can make me a masterpiece. Some of us are stuck that I can't be nothing. I can't ever amount to much. Don't believe that. And the second thing, our, our King Hughes says, well, believe it. And the second thing he says is hold still. Quit squirming. Quit trying to save ourselves. Quit trying to define ourselves. Let the master work on the canvas. For like Paul says, we're created anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. You and I are created new in Jesus to do the good things that God planned for us long ago. And what are those good things? He has called us, he's given us the ability and talent to do the works. We respond out of the change in us that we serve, we love, we find joy, we're made complete, and everything glorifies him. Our lives are much different. But more importantly is God wants to use your life to do this good thing and has changed somebody else who's still on the road to destruction. And he does that through our lives. Paul went to Ephesus and he he planted the church there and all these people were on the road to destruction and many people, Jew and Gentile, came alive and they were all united in Christ's death and he writes this letter to them 
And he reminds them, let's finish out chapter two. He reminds them of this, starting in verse 11. He says, don't forget that you Gentiles used to be outsiders. You were called uncircumcised heathens by the Jews who were proud of their circumcision, even though it affected only their bodies and not their hearts. In those days, and I kind of subphrase this, I cut it down a little bit. In those days, you were living apart from Christ. You were excluded from citizenship. You did not know the covenant promises. You lived in this world without God and without hope. But, now you are united with Christ Jesus. And once you were far away from God, but now you've been brought near to him through the blood of Christ. Paul says, remember everybody in this church, Jews and Gentiles, everybody that now has come together united in the body of Christ. He says, remember that you used to be without heaven's citizenship. You didn't know God's promises. You lived like dead people without hope. But remember that. But now you aren't like that because of Christ Jesus united in his death. We approach the throne of God in loving relationship with him. Why does Paul write this? I think there's a very big reason why Paul writes this to say remember. Why do we remember? Your last sermon note because there's others on the highway to hell. Now I'm going to use stronger language. There, in, in this time, I don't know how many million people it was, in, in Paul's time, the world's population wasn't in the billions, it was in the millions. There were millions of people when Paul writes this that were on the wrong road. And the highway to hell means that they chose to stay on this road and not have a relationship with God or obey him and so they faced eternity separated from him and his love. That's what hell is. You can conjure up whatever image you want of hell but separated from God's love and darkness is the worst image I could ever put in front of you. And that's the road everybody was on and it was their choice. Today, today, there are billions of people on the road to hell eternal separation from God's love because they're choosing that. Westview is a church. We've been in this town since 1938 and, and our, 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 our founding fathers one day said, let's go build up here on this hill in 1984 so we can be right next to the major road, K-18. Let's call it via K-18. Let's build right up here so we can reach our community even better. The mission of this church was to reach the living dead. And we used to be like that. And we live the mission now that we care about everybody that's driving up and down this highway and in our neighborhood. Because we want them to know the way and the off ramp and the life. But not only as a church have we been committed to this for 80 some years, and we're part of one big army of churches. We've been very committed to doing this around Manhattan and the world. I want to share with you all that God has been doing to this church, not for our glory. I don't want to miss this. I just want to overwhelm your socks off of what God does through this church and through us because we say yes and we're yielded and we care about those on the road to destruction. There's a church downtown called The Well. The Well is part of our Wesleyan family, started a number of years ago. Uh, the Well has uh, always reached college students. And, and they are now merging with another church in town called Tallgrass. And they're really good at reaching a young, they're right, you know where their street is? Their crossroads is fourth and points downtown. And they are reaching a young entrepreneurs and young families that really have come and flooded downtown in Manhattan. It's changing rapidly and they're meeting them right there. We've come alongside them as a church, praying for them, actually financially supporting their first year of refiring up a brand new church together. And this is their response to you. Good morning, Westview Community Church. Ben Deaver here with the Tallgrass at the Well staff team. Alicia Hillegeist, Sarah Siders, Josh Siders, and Dave Geldar. We wanted to thank you so much for your financial partnership, which is making a significant impact in uh, allowing this church merger to happen. 
Yeah, we've seen God do some great things over the last year, specifically since January. Our attendance is up 66%. We know numbers aren't the full story. There's much more to it. Uh, in fact, we have a team that's doing the revision process with us, for us. Uh, so we're about to reveal our new name, mission, vision, values, all of that. So stay tuned. Thanks so much for your partnership, Westview. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Can we give a cheer for them? It's exciting what's going on there. <laughs> Guys, be in prayer for them. They're in a very, uh, I don't want to say vulnerable season, but it's new and it's really, they're just taking off. But merging two churches is a very challenging, but they're very good at it. And I'm really excited. They're seeing the growth. They're seeing the, the, the new impact. Not only that church, but True Community Church over in St. George is a church that eight years ago we sent leaders and families from this church because there was a need in St. George. So we sent there and planted a church eight years ago listening to God's call on us. And today, Pastor Art has a message for us as to how that church is doing. Watch this. Hi, Westview Community Church. Uh, my name is Art Matheny, and I'm the pastor here at True Community Church a church that you planted back in 2014. Um, we're about eight years old, and uh, about a year and a half ago, we got in this building. Uh, today is our serve day. You caught us on serve day, so you'll see some video, probably, of us out in the community of St. George serving. Uh, this church was birthed out of prayer and out of um, a, a movement of God within Westview Community Church years ago to pray over spaces and having a sense to, to come and plant here. And now, eight years later, we're thriving, we're growing, and, um, and it's because of seeds that were planted, because you were faithful. We're thankful so much for you. We're thankful for the way God's used um, Westview Community Church the years. See a little bit more about what we've been doing in the community and what we're doing, extending the love of Jesus in tangible ways. I think we could cheer for that too. That's pretty exciting to see. Uh, that community church is built at a corner that we didn't even look at. Uh, Via 24 and Via Flush Road is where I would say they're at. They're at the, cr the major crossroads of all Pottawami County. We never even looked at that land because of how expensive it was, but God says, I want you there. And through a gift, we landed the church right at the most visible place. Uh, and today that church has just taken off. It's really neat what they're doing. Continue to pray for them. Uh, but we've been part of that of that because we just said yes God let's go there's more Hope United Church you know I've been talking about them they are on V11 Worth Street in Wyandotte County North Kansas City they are in a very working class lower economy neighborhood uh, we started on this church plant almost seven years ago guys we had the vision, we went, we didn't even know who the pastor was. And today, they are uh, about two years ago, eh, three years ago, we bought a big supermarket box store that had been long closed. And the first thing they did is they converted it into a big daycare center, the Kids Zone Learning Center, that's been reaching that community now for almost two years. And now Pastor Yort is gonna share with you here in just a second, they are launching the church seven years later on October 16th. Now what's funny is Art shot, or sorry, not Art, but Yort shot this video kind of quick because I want to give him some credit. His wife was in labor while he shot this. <laughs> Watch this video with me. Be encouraged. Good morning, Westview Community Church. My name is Yort Clark, and I am the lead pastor of Hope United Church located in Kansas City, Kansas. I just want to take a quick moment this morning and give you guys a shout out and just say thank you so much for the partnership that we have amongst each other and how much you guys have done for Hope United Church. You guys have given faithfully to see the church started. You've been praying for us over these last couple of years, and you've sent people from Manhattan, Kansas to Kansas City, Kansas, and done service projects here at the building. So I just want to say thank you so much for the partnership and the prayers, and I want to take a quick moment, though, and, and give you an update on, on where we're at with Hope United Church. And the big thing that we have coming up is on October 16th, we actually launch our grand opening service. It starts at 10 a.m. You can find it online. We'll be streaming the service. If you also want to find out more information on the church and what we're up to, you can look us up on Facebook or Instagram. Again, I just want to say 
thank you so much for everything that you guys have done for Hope United Church. We couldn't have done it without you, and just appreciate all the support. Uh, thank you, and have a great Sunday. You can cheer on that, too. That's huge. So write down October 16th. We might be putting together a van <laughs> here on that Sunday to go that way if you want to join that. I, we now have nine missionaries from our church to go around the world, uh, and all of them are in church planning activities. But there's one, and you've seen many of them over the last few months this summer, share with you what God is doing through them, through us together. But there's one we have not highlighted in a while that I think it's important we do. We've been, in 2008, we sent Ken and Susan Black and their boys from our, fam from our church family, we sent them to Kenya, to northern Kenya, Kenya, uh, right at the line of Arabic North uh, and, and Sub-Saharan Christian South, at the, kind of the big battle line, and they went up there to be amongst the Samburu people who were less than 1% Christian, and they planted a church there, and they, they cooperated with the local people, and we did a Jesus film to bring the Bible and uh, the story of Jesus in their language there. And there's a compassion project as that church became a school and a compassion project. There's over 100 of us here that are sponsoring kids from that compassion project. But more importantly is they built the Samburu Bible Training Center. For years, that Bible Training Center has been training pastors. And when you train pastors, they go out and what do they do? They plant churches. So listen to Lawrence Lasis. This is a work that God started through us, connecting with them. Your socks are gonna get knocked off. Listen to what they, what God's doing to them now. His, Lawrence is a pastor at the church up there. Good evening. I'm Lawrence Lessas from Samburu Bible Training Center. Ever since the Samburu Bible Training Center began, we have graduated 64 pastors from Samburu and Laikipia counties. Currently, of the 64 pastors, 60 of them are actively serving and pastoring in different churches and denominations in Samburu and Laikipia counties. In addition, these pastors have planted 61 churches in Samburu and Laikipia counties. Currently, at the training center, we have an ongoing class of five students. Compared to the previous class, the turn up for this class is low due to prolonged drought and famine in Samburu County. In addition to the drought, the economy has been bad for almost two years. However, we thank God for those who are able to come and get the training. Finally, we would like to express our sincere gratitude to Westview for support and prayers for the Samburu Training Center and for the Samburu Church over the years. God bless you all. So let me recap. We sent one family to start a work. Go ahead, cheer. <laughs> We, want, we sent one family to ignite something in them that started with one church that's now planted 61 churches in 14 years. I, I don't know how I don't ball during all this. Um, that is just some of what God's doing through this church and through us. It's not us, it's him. But I want to share a new one with you. I want to show you a picture up here. This is something new and a vision we've had for four years We've been reached out in the town of Riley by local people asking, can we bring a church to Riley? And we've been working on this for four years. And today, all I can share is we have high level information because it's, it's a brand new vision. We're going to Riley to plant a church. Can you cheer about that? We have, again, we're using a church planning network. We have up to four to five different churches helping us do this. We're gonna be the primary church in leading this. We're probably gonna sacrifice families to make it happen, and it's gonna be worth it because God has been so good to our church, amen? And we need your prayer behind this. And, and so this is a, I wanted to share with you today, if you had a tough start today, don't, God's doing so much through us. And let's just keep saying yes. Um, I just wanted you to be excited about God, just like he did through Paul in Ephesus. He, we're planting churches in Manhattan, our state, and around the globe. This little church is doing so much because of you. 
And so when we see this, and, and now it's time to talk about offering, we were all dead, now we're alive, and we want others to know this too. And so offering is a time where we respond to God's grace to us, and offering, we give him our best back. And so there's three offerings I wanna do today. I want us to go into worship together, and the first one is, I want, if you have not made a decision to take the off ramp, Fill out that card. Just take the step. We're here for you. Drop that card off when you leave. Come up here. But we know what it's like to take the off ramp. And we want to walk with you. And we're going to celebrate your baptism. And the new masterpiece that God is, is doing in you. We want to see it too. Second, I would like all of us to hold up that connect card. And we're actually, as an offering together, going to take the next two minutes. And I want all of you to write a note of encouragement to the Sombrero Church right now. I want you to say we're praying for you. You know, they're going through a drought and famine, which are always hard on the church. And Lauren said that's why our class is only has five pastors in it right now, because it impacts them so much. We get a chance that if every one of you would write a card and just say, hey, we're praying for you, we love you. Whatever God puts on your heart to write, write it right now in the next two to three minutes and then we're gonna drop those off in the box and we're gonna copy every one of them and we're gonna send them to them. Our brothers and sisters in Christ in Kenya are gonna hear encouragement all the way from Kansas because we're so globalized and we can. Would you encourage your brothers and sisters, everybody write a note to them today and we'll send them. The last offering is you. Be generous serve well, love well. This road out here is full of people on the way to destruction. And we want to show them the off-ramp. Amen? And so let's go out and do that. So right now, and I'll, I'll, I'll try to shut up for two minutes, write your note. Those of you who are online, you can write on your Connect card there. You can write there and send that. It will automatically send that to us. We would love everybody who's online to send a note in too. And let me tell you, your note is not in vain because one day you may not go to Sombrero County. You might. We're going to send probably another team there before too long. But you will meet all of them one day when we're one big united family in heaven. And I would say if you don't know what to write, just write, we love you. <laughs> Those words speak any language. And when you're done, just look up so I know kind of where we're at. All right, let's wrap this up in just a simple prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for your grace that's poured out on us. We were all dead, but now we're alive. Father, those who want to take that step today, just have them be super bold and step forward and say, I, I need to get in the water or help me with understanding the water. Let that be a great offering to you. Father, for all those churches we just watched, we're praying for them and we continue to support them because they're all at these key places along these key roads. And Father, we pray that this message to the Sambru people lifts and encourages them during a very tough time, that our voice can be heard across the globe. It's so cool. But Father, let our offering be a very fragrant response to your amazing love to us. And we pray all this in the mighty name of Jesus, who we are united in him. And all God's people said, amen. Would you stand with me?
Let me give you a thought. Because Jesus is the way, he's planting churches through us along the way so people know the way. We're gonna finish this song and celebrate this all together, what God's doing. Let the dead come alive in resurrection power. Just join in with us. What is buried, you can raise again. What is lifeless, you'll breathe life within. What seems over to you is not the end. There's nothing that you cannot do. I'm ready, got to see you move. There's resurrection power right here. Breaking out, let dead things come to life, let dry bones come alive. The one who empties graves is here to do the same. Let dead things come to life, let dry bones come alive. Come alive, come alive, let dead things come to life. Come alive, come alive. You're the living proof. There's nothing that you cannot do. I'm ready, got to see you move. There's resurrection power right here. It's breaking out. Let dead things come to life. Let dry bones come to life. The one who empties graves. being here. Let's praise God as we go out. Amen. You guys look sad. <laughs> Are we ready to get some movement going? Here we go. I'm running out of the grave. I'm running out of the grave. Come on. Sickness, get out of my way. Cause there's healing. There's healing here. I'm running out of the grave. Come on. I'm running out of the grave. Stronghold Cause there's freedom, there's freedom here I'm running out of the grave Come on, I'm running out of the grave Sickness, get out of my way Cause there's healing, there's healing here I'm running 
go with God, or you can stay here and run out of the grave with us. You ready? Here we go. I'm running out of the grave. I'm running out of the grave. Sickness, get out of my way, because there's healing. There's healing here. I'm running out of the grave. I'm running out of the grave. Stronghold, it's time that you pray, because there's freedom. There's freedom here.